everyone, welcome to the Collabcast. I'm editor Katie Kizak, and I'm here with Troy Foundry Theaters, David Gerard, and Emily Caro. How are we doing today? Pretty good. How awesome. about you? Oh, I'm doing great. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for being here today. I know um, you're both super busy um, getting ready for the show that previews tonight, um, Yellow at Trojan Hotel in Troy. Um, How's that going? Awesome. Yeah, really, really great. Yeah, Yeah. 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 that's that's definitely the word for it. Mm. It's been a crazy experience. Every show that we do is in a different site a site in Troy, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we go into a space, we're often rehabbing it from the ground up, and it yeah. takes a lot of work. Yeah, lots yeah. and lots of work. Yeah, What's we're getting we're like really good at cleaning. Then? We're awesome. Oh. <laughs> we're so <laughs> I'm so good at mopping. <laughs> we're really awesome at cleaning. Hire honest. me. Yeah. 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 I mean, what kind of stuff did you have to do in that space? I mean, it's been. I mean, a lot of it was so. just actually just basically um, cleaning. Up. Yeah. I mean, because there's just a, a lot of um, trash left mm-hmm. in the space, uh, but also kind of going through some of the, like inventorying some of what's already there because a lot of times when we go into a space. If there is some artifacts left over, uh, like an example is like um, when we did the catastrophe carnival at the um, gas holder building in the basement of the garage that's next door were original carnival signs because there were there was a carnival that was stored there in oh, the 1940s. So <laughs> right? I know, right? Like, so we really up, weird. <laughs> we ended up using some of that signage um, cool. as set pieces. Mm. Uh, in this case, I think we grabbed something like 26 doors mm-hmm. from upstairs mirrors. Uh, and mirrors and have used them throughout the space so that, like like I said well, we bring a lot of our own stuff in certainly furniture um, set pieces we have a really great designer a guy by the name of uh, Doug Green out of Philadelphia who works with Diecast Philly mm-hmm. which is um, the theater company that we're co-producing this with uh, who we've worked with quite a bit and he treats these spaces he worked with us the first time at Collar Works when we did the Prohibition Project Ilium was um, he's He's certainly a scenic designer, but he's m- more like an installation artist yeah. in a lot of ways because he's taking a certain section yeah. of a room, let's mm-hmm. say. I believe his title on the piece is installation designer. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so he creates like, this part of the room is this world. Right. Over here is this world. Um, and he's really good at crafting that. And he's really good at using, I, I, it's almost like doing ready-made art. He's really good at just taking something and making a lot out of nothing yeah and with (laughs) our work uh the audience is so close to the set itself yeah you can actually touch it and sit on it and inhabit it so it's it's important that that element is yeah spot on and he's amazing yeah i mean for those who aren't familiar with the kind of theater that you do um can you sort of explain you know what that is yeah, um, when we work with diecast, we <clears throat> use a uh, methodology that is basically invented by uh, the founder, Brennick Efforts, who's mm-hmm. also director um, for Yellow. Emily and I usually aren't always acting in our shows. Yeah. Either I'm artistic directing or maybe I'm directing a show. Emily's our executive director, so she's sometimes dealing with fundraising and development and box office right. and a lot of front of house stuff. and um, Producing as a whole. Uh, mm-hmm. But it, in this case, we both, for the first time together, um, get the opportunity to act in this piece as well, uh, which is a little bit of a gift um, yeah. for us. But Brenna has a methodology that she um, has titled Collective Creation. Mm-hmm. And basically, we build pieces from the ground up, usually using some kind of theme. This started with a uh, playwriting workshop, I believe, at Texas Tech. Um, the yeah, idea came out of New development play, uh, play workshop. Diecast went down there, and they actually worked with the students, but... <laughs> In the process, they began building this piece. Okay. Yeah, and then it moved to we got a residency at uh, the Elizabeth F. Murray Foundation Art Farm up in mm-hmm. Granville, so we were there for that about, through Collar Works yeah. in Troy. Yeah, and that was for, I think about a week, so we were the week there, yeah. and then some of it was developed in Philly, some of it was developed in North Carolina, some Very of it cool. was developed up here. So it's been over like four different states, yeah, um, several different locations, and sometimes starting with a theme. We knew we wanted to start somewhere with horror. And so Brenna was really looking at horror and particularly Lovecraft, uh, Lovecraft's writings, some of the in- inspirations that he had, some of the problematic politics that Lovecraft mm. had too because he was yeah. maybe possibly a horrible person. <laughs> um, <laughs> the beautiful parts of him and the horrible parts of him. Yeah. Um, and other other um, 
Victorian writers who were writing basically this concept of cosmic horror or cosmic terror, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little bit more, I'm going to use Brenna's phrase, yes. uh, which is a little bit more of a philosophical horror. This is not a jump scare kind of show. Um, right, it's not bloody. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. going to yeah. jump out at you and no scare gore. you. It's yeah. Which seems to be like super popular nowadays. I mean, we had like in terms of film, like Midsummer and Hereditary. Yeah, yes. yeah like that. Like exactly. that's happening and people are really using horror to think more yeah. and really get into well, like your and bones. What's so cool about this project, uh, every time that we work with Diecast, we kind of go one step further. Mm -hmm. We kind of build on top of the collective language that we've learned as a company, how we've trained um, all together. It's very specific. Um, this time there's a lot of really cool um, light play. Yeah. And that's all I'll say. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So there's a there's a, a movement vocabulary that we build together. There's a breathing um, cab, uh, vocabulary that we build together, um, and certainly from a writing standpoint, everybody's writing. Most of the pieces are, let's say, for like Emily's piece has probably been written by two or three different people. So it's gone through yeah. two or three different. And some actors. of my and I wrote some of my piece myself, mm. but it's again, it's that collective. Right. Yeah, and we're still thing. editing. Like you know, last night we we, we had our first I basically dress. We had a photographer there. Sarah Pedzak took pictures for us. Lovely, because uh, yeah. she's awesome. Love you, Sarah. Love you, Sarah. <laughs> and um, we know that there are slight adjustments. We'll probably make this afternoon before the preview, which we're okay with. We're not like, oh gosh, we right. got an audience. We're just sort of used yeah. to that. We're sort of used to adjusting, particularly the first time we get an audience because because it's a piece that moves the audiences. Mm -hmm. There are places to sit but you're going to be going from room to room from setting right. to setting and the yeah. idea of traffic patterns actually yeah. really kind we of really, matter we need an audience before we can understand the piece completely yeah. yeah so that's, that's really cool. a little you know like strange to think of as traditional as a traditional actor in the traditional theater that's mm -hmm. so not how things work right um but that's what we're all about yeah, yeah. i mean yeah i mean you know i was teaching this today and I was talking about rules and I, I hate the word rules you know I like yeah. the idea of guidelines I like the idea of like sort of something that framework. guides me yeah, yeah. framework <laughs> um, but rules are to me I'm like I'm, I want to break rules that's all right. I want to do is break rules and so a lot of Troy Foundry's work is breaking conventions I mean mm -hmm. there are certain kind of established conventions w within the theater that we're used to of like sitting down and watching a play and the curtain opening right. or, and we're and just then you not sit through it yeah, yeah we're well just I think it's that, important you know. too to like talk about why we want to do that yeah like why do we want to break those conventions mm -hmm. I know I, I know why I want to yeah why do well you I think I, I think because <clears throat> I think television is going through I, everybody talks about this golden age of television, but the television writing is at its zenith. It's, it, it, we, nobody's going to do it better than television, particularly naturalistic and situational drama and mm -hmm. comedy. And um, I would say the same thing with film. Filmmaking has taken on this sort of, like, you know, these right. massive big films with lots of CGI and all. That's great. Like that, I'm, I, I'm not against that. I, I like the Avengers. You know, <laughs> I, I like those movies. Um, I like big films like that. I like um, a, a adventure and action um, and. Uh, composition and style and color and all these things that we see with a, a lot of television, a lot of film, and, and certainly with television, storytelling I think is is right. really kind of perfected in many ways. Um, and I think when we try to do the same thing in theater, we're just kind of doing the same thing and right. we're not really doing anything new. And I think w the way that we have to respond as artists is find new ways to work within space mm -hmm. and for us I, I was inspired by a lot of work that I saw in Philadelphia when I went to grad school there um, and this idea of I, I think the first show I saw in Philly that was I guess by site specific is there's this company called Pig Iron uh, mm -hmm. and they were doing a, a piece called Pay Up and it was wild. You went to this warehouse. They gave you five dollars. <laughs> they gave you five singles, and you used those singles to go into a room to see a piece. And when you went into the room, you sat and you put headphones on, and the dialogue came through the headphones. And the and the actors just did the stylized movement into tableaus. Oh, it's like and, a silent rave. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. It was so crazy. And if you got trapped outside, not that I've ever been to. <laughs> those are so. Um, but if you got trapped outside of one of the rooms. Uh, there'd be another character that'd be like, hey, you, 
come on over here. I got something to show you, you know? So like yeah. you either got into one of the, the little mini plays or I got took out on a fire escape and it was told by one of the guys that everything was bullshit, that it was all like, it was all right. false. It was all wrong. Can you say shit? Can you say <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, totally <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll try not to drop any F-bombs, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, and, I, and I remember thinking about that piece. I was like, oh my God, I, I love this. And I love yeah. the idea of not knowing what was coming next. Mm-hmm. I loved the proximity of the actors yeah. and that's fun and even as an actor it's a really it's jarring it's at first it can be really jarring but there's something especially if you've done film work what's great about doing film work is that you know you don't have to work so hard and, and a lot of ways when you're on stage and you're so far away right you, you it's it's difficult to be subtle right it's difficult to have like a subtle moment and i, right. I was talking about this the other day yeah. that, that when you're this far from somebody like we're in my track my space where I'm working right now, and we had a few people last night, so it gave, gave me a sense of mm-hmm. it during our dress. Uh, they're right there. Right. So they're gonna see everything that's happening here. Mm-hmm. So I, I can work less. I feel like I can drop into the character mm-hmm. a little more fully, mm-hmm. uh, especially this kind of work, which is, I don't wanna say it, it, it lacks plot or narrative, but it's certainly abstracted in a way right. that for an audience, we everyone, make our audience do a lot of work. Ev- everyone's <laughs> right. building, basically everyone's going to have a different experience. Yeah. Everyone's building their own version based on what piques their interest and who they decide to f- maybe follow. follow and what yeah. they hear. And mm-hmm. so like that, that to me is what's so astounding about this work is that it's every single person will have a completely different view, sound, yeah, if you taste, if you, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah really. I mean, especially this piece because yeah. it, it is this wider. It's eleven characters, and it is a wide variety yeah. all over the of, of time and period, um, and even I would even say style of acting and certainly text. Um, it's very dense. It's a really dense piece, uh, which I like. I like the fact that we're that as a company we're still con- concerned with our work being literate and I, and. I, I don't think it's pretentious, and if anybody says it's pretentious, it's like, well, well, well I'm not going to say the F-bomb, I promise I wouldn't say that. But you know what I mean? Like, I, we're, We work unapologetically, we're going to continue right. to work unapologetically, because I think that we're kind of, we're, we're finding something in our work, yeah, we're finding something yeah. really new and interesting, and certainly in Troy, because Troy is what Troy is, and if mm-hmm. you live there, you understand how idiosyncratic that is city is how interesting and weird and wonderful and creepy and yeah. and rich that I think our company p- really plugs well into that and our work really right. plugs into that as well and for those who don't are like who aren't familiar with the actual plot of yellow I know we haven't exactly touched on this yet but can you sort of explain um, what people might expect walking into the space I think you can expect to walk in and get a drink, maybe some spiced cider mm-hmm. or beer or a glass of wine. Uh, sit on a velvet couch. Sit on a nice velvet couch. Um, enjoy the architecture of mm. the space. And then be invited into very personal experiences, perhaps on some sort of dream level. That's sure. really all I want to say. Okay. <laughs> um, you can be prepared to be on your feet mm-hmm. and moving. There yeah. are places to sit if you are the type of person who needs a seat. Mm. Um, you don't have to stick around with a scene. Yeah. You can decide, eh, I'm over this Yeah. and move on. I, the yeah. interesting thing about this piece, I could say this about this piece, certainly Prohibition Project was a lot like this. Certainly La Ronde, when we did that production, was a lot like this. That If you were to go twice... and. I urge people to go twice because the thing is, is you cannot see everything. There's right. no way you can see everything. There's too much going there's on. There's too much. Yeah. There's too much, um, which is wonderful. I think too much is great. Right. Um, it's sort of designed that way for that you get to choose your experience. And if you enjoy it, if you like what you saw, I think a lot of people are going to want to come back. Yeah. Because if they've met, let's say, let's say if they've met six or seven of those people, five or six or seven of those people. And got a drink and had a good time. You know, um, I think there. I, I hope the hope is that I want to meet those other four or five people right. that I didn't get to meet. Yeah, I, I want to try a different experience. And it's something that people aren't familiar with. Like you know, you expect to go to a theater piece and you're like, okay, this is the act, 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 intermission, act, act, whatever. Right. But it's like 
you're controlling that part of it as mm-hmm. an audience member and it's something that people aren't yeah and once you're in you're in it's right, 75 yeah. minutes there's no intermission you, yeah it starts and yeah yeah we, we ask a lot of our audience and and I think part of the reason that we do that is because we're interested in figuring out other ways that we can tell the same stories that have been being told for years and years mm-hmm. and years and right and that's not to say there's anything wrong with being classic and you know like following tribute following to- yeah paying tribute to classic theater but we're just not interested in that. <laughs> well, there's like new things to be told. There's new like, medias. There's if, technology. Right. There, like there, there are so many things. And if you keep telling the same story, then like it's never going to develop as a genre of like art. Well, and art should different. reflect what's going on in the world, right? right? I mean, it yeah. should. Even and, and I think there is value in taking something. I think we are going to be taking something that is a classic piece of theater and reinterpreting mm-hmm. it and and representing it and regrounding it. Yeah. Um, and recontextualizing it we'll do that we're going to do that but we're never not going to do that if we're taking something that's extant and that exists because because part of it i think is what's the point you know why do let's say let's use romeo and julia as an example Mm -hmm. it's a great play and i actually think it's a very modern play in a a lot of respects that's why it's been like remade in so many different ways right Mm -hmm. and so I've, I've directed a production of Romeo and Juliet. I was very proud of. I've seen really good productions of Romeo and Juliet. I've also seen really terrible productions of Romeo and Juliet. And I actually like the Baz Luhrmann film an awful lot. Uh, you know? I love that movie. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, and I think he actually brings something new to it in that yeah. interpretation. And I think if you're going to do it, like if you choose to do that play, then I think yeah, you got to know why and right. why now, right? And I know this is like a grad school question. Why this play now? It's the mm-hmm. Passover question, right? <laughs> and like, why... But I think you have to know why. Mm. And if you don't, then I think you should just back away. Because if it's just like, oh, I've always wanted to do that play. Well, that's an affinity. And that, that's great, but you got to let those things go. you got to really have, I, I think there needs to be, a, a, I think there needs to be more of a social kind of reason um, yeah, behind it. totally. Your art, and know. that's absolutely also a part of our mission is to right. address social issues through our work mm-hmm. and things that are going on and things that matter, things that affect people and give them a kind of a, a forum or a looking glass to or even a platform a, a platform to you know? dis, to see to think to dis, discuss and yeah yeah the, I mean theater is a it, I feel like it's it's it should always be a, 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 um, a discipline and an art of, of inquiry anyway I, I don't think like I don't think you should lo- leave a theater or a theatrical experience particularly a, li- a live experience that you've experienced with mm-hmm. several people. It's different than being well, watching something in a box, right? Right. And you're actually with people. That, um, that that in of itself is visceral, and it can be even more, especially with our work because it's so 360. But also, I, I don't think you should be leaving having all the like all your questions answered. I think you should yeah. actually leave with more questions, mm-hmm. right? And well, yeah. it should prompt discussion, and mm-hmm. you should like wake up in the middle of the night and be like, what? Yeah, I hope people, I, 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 that's the thing with this piece because it's not jump scare. I kind of hope people like two or three hours after seeing the piece are like, oh my mm. God. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I, I want people to wake up and go, oh. yeah, I really do want people to be yeah. unsettled and sort of, yeah. Well, so weirded out by. <laughs> yellow um, previews tonight, mm-hmm. Wednesday, October 30th. And then we open on Halloween. And we open on yeah. Halloween and then we have two shows on Saturday. We have a 7 p.m. show and a 9 p.m. show, so depending on your... Yeah, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 8, Saturday, 7 and 9, and then next week, same thing. Mm-hmm. Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday nope, Friday. just Thursday. Thursday, Friday. <laughs> 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 Thursday, Friday, and then two on Saturday. So you That's can catch right. us this weekend and next weekend. Great. Yeah. Excellent. And what does sort of like the preview show give you um, as opposed to like premiering? Oh, it gives us a chance to still make changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because we, I cool. mean, that, that's the thing is that, and, and I mean, some theaters, someday when we have lots of money, Katie, yeah. lots, we'll preview lots of for money. two weeks. <laughs> we are a 5013 not for profit um, organization. C3. 501C3 not for profit organization. Um, we would probably preview for longer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If we had the if, if we had this sort of uh, the ca- kind of capital that we could you know afford to do that, because yeah. it would be nice, especially with work like this, especially with new work. Anything that anytime you're doing new work, um, 
I mean, Maggie Cahill knows this over at the Rep. They always do a, a new show every year come, that comes out of the Next Act, which I particip participated in several times. And that week of previews is so huge. Mm -hmm. uh, the last one I worked on Red Maple, which my buddy David Bunce wrote, um, which won the, the Next Act Right. Uh, from, from a couple of years ago, and they had um, premiered it last year. And really great play, really funny play, really s like smart comedy, great for the rep. And David was in the room that whole last week, still making little textual changes. Margaret was still sort of making you know uh, different um, d decisions and changes and, and adjustments right. as a director. And so there's a lot of luxury in those previews. Mm. Um, I wish we had more, but we work pretty smart. Our company, and especially with Diecast, yeah. we work really smart. So we understand we work what well we're looking. together. We've developed a nice working relationship yeah. that yeah. And allows we all us to clip <laughs> clip yeah. along at a pace. Yeah, we all well. under we sort of all understand the aesthetic. We all really trust Brenna. Mm. Really trust her because she's got this sort of brilliant mathematical brain because in a lot of ways this work is math it's this weird algorithm that mm -hmm. she it's puts timing together. it's all timing right. you know because certain scenes don't end at the same time as other scenes so how does that time you because we're going to do another rotation of it you know what i mean there's track a there's track b there's mm -hmm. transitions blah, 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 you know and so to, to be you know to be able to follow that it's hard for me even to wrap my brain around it and yet she just is able to do that so we trust her so when we get through like a dress rehearsal last night I think we were all on the same page as far as like what the adjustments we're going to make for tonight. Like we'll rehearse this afternoon, mm -hmm. do a few adjustments, a couple like edits here from a text standpoint, certainly some staging edits, and then we'll get in front of a, maybe a larger audience for our preview. We had a few people last night for dress, which was great. And I guarantee you we'll get to Thursday and we'll probably have a, a, a quick put in rehearsal on Thursday just to incorporate any changes that we make because yeah. of the audience. Yeah, what we learned. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we had a map for Laurent. We had this map and we assigned everybody to go to a certain room, and then we had a map of the space, and it was a drawing one of our company members made. It was really great. Yeah. It was on the back of the program. We were like, yeah, we got a map. Super <laughs> cool, right? <laughs> Super cool. After the first night, after the first preview, we were like, we hate the maps. The maps <laughs> the are terrible. Time. Everybody's just looking at the maps. Yeah. Nobody's actually looking uh, at the maps. The maps have to go. The maps yeah. gotta go. The maps are <laughs> gone. And you know, they were still on the program, but mm -hmm. we never referenced them. Mm -hmm. So people didn't know ne necessarily to look at them. Right, like we had made copies of maps and put them on the bars. Yeah. And it was like, get rid of the maps. The maps are a bad <laughs> idea. And I mean, you know, it's... Well, there's so many things to play with in, in sort of the format that you're choosing to work in, and it's... Yes, yeah. and also not falling in love with an idea, you know. Right. Like it's 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 you got to kill your babies, you know. You got to be okay <laughs> with like murdering your children, just like hey, you know, kill them, kill the babies, <laughs> kill all the babies, not all, of them, but you know. Yeah, well, let's talk okay. a little bit about what's coming up. Yeah, what do you I, have next? I, well, this after? kind of plugs into this idea of like art, sort of like um, uh, being a reflection of like what's going on in the world, mm. and and we're trying to as a company we're, we want to get better and better and better at that. So this was an opportunity that came across a few years ago, a couple years ago, but the timing didn't quite work for sure. the artists that we um, were going to partner with. I went to grad school with a guy by the name of Charlie Del Marcel. He's a really, he's probably Philadelphia's, he's arguably one of Philadelphia's best actors. Mm -hmm. We work with all the really good people from Philadelphia, by the <laughs> way, which is kind of awesome. I mean, that's really, really great. I went to grad school there, I made a lot of friends there. Yeah. Um, I went back a couple years ago to do a, a, a trilogy of plays. Uh, it was a John Guare trilogy, it was a world premiere. And I was there for about six months, and Charlie and I reconnected because he was in the play. And he knew Emily and I had started this theater company, and Emily and him um, get along super great and have a, a lot of things in common. Um, and I, when I did my thesis in Philadelphia, Charlie was in my play. And the day of our opening, his brother died of an overdose. Uh, mm -hmm. um, there was fentanyl, and, and yeah, yeah. he was shooting heroin, mm -hmm. uh, and he passed away, which was super tragic. It was really terrible. I ended up having to go on stage for him. I, like, I ended up acting in my right, director's right. thesis, and, um, and he had come back. But it, was, it was, had a profound Im impact on his life. It had a profound impact on his, other, his um, younger brother, um, Adam's life. Adam is a visual artist, a uh, really incredible projection artist. He's also an illustrator. He's also a painter. And they started talking about possibly creating something, not necessarily as a tribute, to their brother Joey, but to sort of shine a little light on, on the fact that this... The epidemic as a whole. Yeah, it sort of affects everybody. That yeah. It's really hard nowadays to be living, especially in this part of the world, and this, this part of the country even, and not know somebody mm -hmm. that's affected by this, um, this epidemic. Yeah. Or, 
or directly affected, like have, has lost a brother or has Absolutely, lost a husband or yeah. has lost a wife or has lost a child. Um, and so they put their heads together and they started working on a piece and then he pitched it to us. The timing didn't work that year and we knew we were going to come back to it. And what was really great about that is that over that time, Charlie really got to kind of like dive into the, that script. And basically it's a one-man show. Uh, and Charlie performs it. Mm-hmm. And it really is a sort of tapestry of stories of people who have gone through this. We've taken in, uh, many of the people that are talked about in this piece, um, the people that have lost their lives, uh, Adam and another artist. Uh, uh, Adam is the scene, is Adam the, is the visual is artist. the visual artist on the mm-hmm. project, um, and he's also incorporating his art into the scenic design. Yeah. Uh, Avery uh, makes paper out of clothing so we've collected clothing Mm -hmm. from people that have lost their lives uh, from family members that have been willing to donate it Mm -hmm. and that's going to be in in some way used in the piece because basically Charlie's going to be performing inside an installation and And this is happening at Collar Works Gallery this is the week of December 14th so he'll perform Wednesday night He'll perform Thursday night, and it would be just sort of like one rotation of the yeah. piece. And then starting at 7 o'clock on that Friday, he's going to perform the piece for 24 hours straight till Saturday. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot to handle <laughs> as a performer. Yeah. yeah. That's that close to something like that. Yeah. And that's definitely something that we've talked about as well as mm-hmm safety mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. longevity and those are all things that are on our mind yeah. as we embark on this project but I'd say the 24-hour setup of it is also really important to Charlie as far as how the piece is performed yeah, yeah. Um, and Absolutely. it's something that he's going to work really hard <laughs> really yeah. hard on yeah well interestingly enough when Charlie and I did the shows in Philly together that that Guerra trilogy the it, it, the first one premiered like end of January second one was like I think something like early March and then the third was like around April and then at the end of April early May I think those are the dates we ended up doing a marathon of all three of those plays and I was in two of them and my character got killed and then like I kind of had like a ghost moment like mm. I'm back but I'm not really <laughs> back whatever in the third play but it was like literally one moment and it was. I had a great track. I had a really nice track. It wasn't too hard. You know, the marathon day. It was. It was a, enough performing, but it wasn't difficult. And Charlie was in all three of those plays, yeah. every act, <laughs> and some of it was emotionally like, oh, mm-hmm. it's John Guare, and it's some of his most richest sort of you know lyrical writing. You know, the real American <laughs> expressionism. You know, and the stage was filled with sand. And the stage was filled with sand. Yeah, it was just yes. That's Imagine right. Imagine trudging through sand. Yes, for eight hours or ten hours, yeah. however long it was, and um, just watching him, just being an actor as a, a peer, and watching him take take <clears throat> care of himself to be able to get through that day, both vocally and physically, but also just. He almost made it look easy. I, mm. I'll be honest. It was right. it was a little bit like I'm not sure I could have made it look as easy as he made it. He's just he's a very good. He's got he's got a real good he's got good great craft skills. Yeah, he's got amazing. He's an amazing professor too. He's also just an amazing performer. He's an amazing musician. So some of the piece will be music mm-hmm. as well. Um, and there will be obviously a lot of um, Adam's artwork that's involved. Um, yeah, and it's nice. It's nice to be working with two brothers who make fun of one another and right. bust one another's ass and. Um, I think the the other big part of this project that we're really excited about is the opportunity to dive a little deeper into our community engagement. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't want to say too much on that because we have some engagement that could be considered surprise engagement. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. viral, I guess. Maybe. Um, yeah, we're we're really excited to kind of get on a on a deeper level with the community as far as who we're reaching and yeah. what kind of content we're putting out there. And, and who it affects. And yeah. who it affects and why and how. And yeah, and it's both ways, too, because this <clears throat> idea of being able to bring other artists in, like that's a real big part of our mission, too, 
is it's not just about us producing new work and we yeah. do that I mean we have our Dark Day Monday series which will be coming back uh, in the spring usually we'll do it during the fall but our fall is pretty like heavy, heavy programming yeah. we have something we have something that we think is secret going to happen on Victorian Stroll but we're not going to talk about that at all but so we have a like we were just pretty heavily programmed for mm. the fall so we've moved our Dark Day Mondays into the spring which is great but we've been I mean, we've read so many new plays and so as a yeah. theater company um, I think we did like 20 Dark Day Mondays or something, yeah, something like last that. year. Yeah. That's and 20 plays, 20 playwrights. 20 weeks. 20 <laughs> weeks. Oh, Count, actors. Countless actors. Yeah. Countless actors, yeah. yeah. And so we're, we're delving, we're finding new work. We did yeah. produce, the 100 Years was the first, was one of the first plays that came out of um, our Dark Day Monday series that we fully produced and getting a name playwright like Richard Dresser, that was a big coup for us, mm -hmm. which was really great. But also, getting to this end of this year and we look back at this right. year and we look at Prohibition Project, we look at 100 Years, we look at Yellow and then we look at um, what heroin sounds like and that's four world premieres in one year. Yeah. And I, her, I, I don't think Emily and I even discussed like at the beginning of the year we weren't like, we're going to do four world premieres. No. It just it happened. happened that way and it was sort of like, wow, we're doing four world premieres. That's awesome like because that's basically I mean Emily and I were at, in grad school at the same time she was at Florida State I was at Temple we'd call each other late at night we're like I hate life I hate it so much I just want to die uh, um, but we talked a lot about being able to do new work and yeah. finding new artists and discovering new talent and how to do that with no money right like no money. Like Again, no money. we are a five hundred one c three not for profit organization. If you yeah. donate, it's www. And I mean, like, Troy how does that account. overlap work as well when you're going from project to project? Specifically, like, I mean, looking back at the last year when you have four in a row that you're putting out. I mean, like, what is that? How does that work? Um, I mean, I'm just thinking in terms of like going from yellow to the heroin project is like yeah. Where's well, the, where's the time in between? Um, there's a little bit of time in between, but not for us necessarily because we'll be, we're right. already Yeah, I'm already in production meetings. In for yeah, we're right. already for rehearsing for, uh, and like, producing yeah. and looking at venues and like we're constantly thinking mm -hmm. about what's coming next. And that's one of the, one of our jobs as, you know, producers of the company. Right. Um, but, you know, each project kind of in a way has its own scale, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Um, like this is a this is a bigger project. This is the biggest project that we've ever done with Diecast. Um, the next project is smaller. It's a one man show with a smaller creative team. Mm. Um, and then the the project that we have planned for uh, summer, which we haven't announced yet, is probably going to be on the bigger side, but a little, but very different than Yellow. Yeah. Yeah. And so you know, like everything has a different scale, and every project has a different need, and every production that we do is essentially planning a wedding and then mm -hmm. doing it all over again <laughs> like we, I don't know why we do this we're totally insane yeah but the amount of organization and planning and and skill that that takes I think people don't think about sometimes yeah. they just see the art and mm -hmm. I don't know I we have a third co-founder of our company Alex Tarantelli and um, she's our business director and our finance director, and we couldn't do it without her. Absolutely couldn't do it without her. Yeah. And she's also our production stage manager on this, too, because she is, like, super organized. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, way more organized than Emily and I. What? You know? I take offense to that. I mean, you are very organized. <laughs> I'm, like, sort of managed chaos is basically how I... Sort That's of my like job, basically, is to manage David's <laughs> chaos yeah, yeah, and yeah. say, nope, can't buy that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, we just... I guess we just do it. I don't know. I, 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 one thing that we decided last year was we decided to get out of a season format of like, okay, we're sure. going to announce this next season. This is now our third season. This mm -hmm. is now our 25th season. What we decided, and this was through advice from a lot of people that we really respect and like working with, yeah. um, is that we are not typical of a regional theater. We are not that model we are not ever I don't think going to be in any kind of subscriber based model and marrying ourselves that far out in a lot of ways is not always great for us because mm -hmm. there are certain things that can fall into our lap yeah. and we want to be able to respond to that and also just in general being able to respond to the world around us right. for sure the environment around us yeah. as it happens mm -hmm. as it as it comes even sure. something like yellow or even prohibition project is a great example because there was a lot of debate about immigration 
not that there wasn't before it, but it did reach kind of a zenith. It was reaching a zenith around that time of the year. And that debate, because it was such a big thing in the 1930s during Prohibition, mm. right, that, that, that debate, that idea really made its way into the piece in a way that I think was a little unexpected for us mm. as we were building it. Initially, sure, we knew that was going to be an element to it, yeah. but it really became like a big part of it yeah. in a way that in a way that I enjoy that we are the kind of company that can respond that quickly and For feel sure. okay with that and feel open to incorporating mm-hmm. something that maybe wasn't there before because that's just the way that we're going to work. You know, especially when you're building new work too. There's a luxury of that of that we are mm-hmm. building new work, you know, so we yeah. can respond accordingly. Yeah. yeah, and it's cool to see something like this like continue growing an audience when there's like big theaters who are like trying to sort of like take over the capital region and you know there's like a bunch of people just sort of relying on Broadway plays to draw audiences but there's like a different way to do that too that yeah. can actually like relate to people and we, where they live and what they do. We do. We we work really hard <laughs> to get to get the audience that yeah. we have and I think at first we were surprised because we were like Oh my God! All these young people. It's a young mm. audience. Like, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, like, where that, are they coming from? Yeah, I think from? I can unequivocally say we have the youngest audience in the area. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I, you know. I would, love it. I would love. I would love. I would love somebody to come over to Casa Diagenaval and sit down by that fire and argue with me about who has the youngest audience because I'm pretty sure we have it. I, I can't, I just, you know, I've been to the theater yeah. in this area. And there's, again, well, there's a lot of great theater in this area. While too. that's sure. amazing, yeah. it's also challenging because, you know, look at your typical donor age and, yes. your, t- and your typical, um, when you reach the age of giving, yes. let's say, um, <laughs> that's not our quite our audience yet. Right. And so it's going to develop over time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the relationships that we've made with the businesses in Troy are, have been really awesome. Yeah. And every month we make a new connection yeah. and, you know, every time we work in a new space, we make a new connection. And it's just, it's been really cool to see our audience kind of grow over the last two and a half years. Yeah, yeah. Jim Scully's been awesome. He owns, one of the co-owners at the Trojan Hotel, he owns ba- uh, Bacchus, uh, the wood-fired pizza place, oh, which yeah. is awesome. And their bar is awesome. And Jeff <laughs> is an amazing bartender. He just is. But also, we were almost going to do Prohibition Project last year there. It D- didn't work out. It was just a timing, scheduling yeah. thing. But he so wanted us to come to a show there Mm -hmm. and he ended up reaching back out to us it really wasn't us reaching out to him we were looking for spaces yeah he had reached out Emily said what do you think should we follow up I was like sure let's let's follow up let's see I wasn't sure I was like maybe it's not going to happen and I'm so glad it is because this is really the perfect the really perfect space for this piece I mean it really is Mm -hmm. and with our work too this the space defines the piece to a certain extent like it's no accident that now the idea that the Trojan Hotel used to be a hotel, that's yeah. that thread is built into yellow. Mm-hmm. You Without know? saying too much. Without yeah. saying too much, but that thread <laughs> is there. It's not the main thread. Right. But it's an awareness. It is, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a bar. Th- there's a thread there that mm-hmm. is that is sort of connected. Um, and so, you know, when we work in like a new space or a found space, it's just like the stuff that we find. If we find artifacts from that space, we can, you, we can build them and use them in some of our scenery, but also the concept and the idea of where we are. Yeah. Like with Prohibition Project, we were on the ground floor of Collar Works and that used to be a collar factory. Right. So we knew that part of that project would be there's a speakeasy at this collar factory at night. Great. Okay, we can start there. It's at least it's a place to start. Yeah. And I think that's just a really interesting work because you're just you're immediately responding to the given set of circumstances that, that you have as a company working in site specific work. And I find that really super exciting and fun and interesting. We also have this really creepy thing that's happening to all of us. <laughs> we keep obviously there's a lot of things that are the color yellow. Bananas are yellow. I mean, we all know that there's like a lot of yellow there. We keep on finding yellow things though. Like all of us individually, all the actors and sort of artists and, and it's content true. Creators. He's not lying. <laughs> Just like randomly placed, like a half deflated yellow balloon in the basement. 
which wasn't there. I don't <laughs> think it was there. But just these strange things yeah. or somebody like will hand you something. The building's talking to us and I think it's happy. Yeah, I think it's, the building's definitely happy. I think that building was probably, when you look at the upper floors, which we're not allowing the audience in, right? Because they're, yeah, they're yeah. not accessible. But like when you look at the upper floors, you're like, oh, I think some terrible things happened here. <laughs> 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 right? So to bring some happiness and some warmth and some life yeah. back into a space like that, especially because it's Troy, is awesome. Yeah. It's so cool. Because yeah, we see that happening all over the city. The we see these can, old structures being The space can breathe again. Kind yeah. Of. Mm. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for doing what you do. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing what else you have in store. Thanks for doing what thanks you do, you. Katie. Yeah, thank you so much. You're really. awesome. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you so much for being here today. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.